So with that, over to you, Commissioner Grove. Well, thanks, Lisa. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all. And thank you for uh, accommodating the switch in times. We moved this a little bit earlier today because the governor's budget is coming out uh, on the economy in just a half an hour. So we have a packed day as it relates to Minnesota's economy. And Happy New Year to you all. It's good to be here in our first month of the new year and share the latest news on Minnesota's economy. The release just came out, so you're probably, um, you probably either haven't seen it or you'll need to go to Deed's website to do so, mn.gov slash deed. You'll find it there. I believe we just published it. But we'll walk through it here and then excited to take your questions as well. And I'm joined by my colleague, uh, our economist, Orion Cassell from our labor market information team uh, to partner with me in this conversation. So as you'll see when you look at the data, Minnesota did take a holiday break from our long streak of job growth over the last 14 months in December, and we did lose jobs in December, about 5,200 jobs down in the state. But that doesn't really tell the whole story. It was actually kind of a weird month. We gained 900 jobs in the private sector, but in government, we lost 6,100 jobs. This is really unique. It's not unheard of to lose so many jobs in government in one month, but it did definitely catch our eye uh, because, of course, the private sector gained, gained jobs. So it's kind of a mixed story there. Uh, as you may be asking, you know, how do we lose 6,100 jobs in government in December? We're still unpacking that. Um, I will say it was almost entirely in local government is where we saw those losses happening. We don't know if it was because end of the year grants kind of shifted funding models or if there was a seasonal adjustment issue, uh, but that is where the losses were. Um, which ultimately led to a 0.2% decrease uh, in job growth for the month of December compared to the U.S., which was up 0.1% in November uh, in December, having gained 223,000 jobs. So uh, we did break our 14-month streak of job growth in the aggregate, but that private sector job growth continues to be on a 15-month streak of growth, although it did slow to 900 after a couple thousand in November. Um, over the year, just to compare Minnesota to the U.S., Minnesota is about 3.2% over the year, uh, with the private sector up 3.6%, that does significantly outpace the nation. The U.S.'s job growth was 2.9% over the year, with private sector growth at 3.2%. So Minnesota's uh, comeback uh, out of the pandemic has continued to outpace in terms of job growth the U.S. over the last year, something that we're grateful for and that we want to continue to see continue. We saw some good news on the labor force front because, of course, workforce shortages are the issue that everyone's talking about and has been for some time. We did add 3,300 people to the labor force in December. Um, that kept our labor force participation rate steady at 67.9%, still one of the highest in the nation, but still certainly down from before the pandemic, owing both to the demographic factors we've been tracking for a long time, but also to the effects of the pandemic on our workforce. Uh, the U.S. workforce grew about 40, 439,000 workers overall in December. Um, the, the national labor force participation rate is 62.3%. So we're still a good six or seven points higher in, than the country when it comes to our labor force participation. But this remains the central uh, thing that is holding our economy back, that challenge of finding enough workers for those jobs. We're still at about one person searching for every three or four jobs that are out there, and that is what's limiting our productivity at a time when businesses uh, still see a lot of growth, but don't have the workers there to cover uh, the roles and, and accelerate that growth. Unemployment rate uh, ticked up to 2.5%. That puts it as still a full point down from the U.S. number, which is 3.5%, and still a historically low number, uh, but it did go up by a couple of ticks. And then when you look at kind of the, the disparity equation in the unemployment rate, which we always examine, and here we look at the 12 month average because we don't have enough data sets to, to give a, a reliable look at the, the, demogra the racial demographic data in unemployment insurance. We saw some good news here. We saw the unemployment rate for Hispanic workers tick uh, back down to 3.8%. And for black workers, the unemployment rate went down to 3.9%. It has gone down every month of the last six months. So that is a, a streak that we certainly want to see continue because we know the labor force participation rates of people in our color of, of people of color in our state are outpacing those of white workers as well. So there is a large number of people of color in our state who want to work and aren't finding jobs as fast as their white counterparts, but increasingly that gap is shrieking a little bit for which uh, we're excited to see and certainly a long ways to go. So I think in summary, you know, obviously kind of a weird month with that job dip overall, but the private sector did grow. We haven't seen massive reports of layoffs. There were a few kind of near the end of November, early December that were on our radar, 
but there weren't a, a slew of them over the last month and a half. Obviously, as we begin the new year, like every state, we are monitoring the economic conditions very closely. We know that the Fed's actions are, are designed to uh, curb inflation and try to prevent uh, a large recession, but, but rather uh, encourage a soft landing to the inflationary challenges that we face. We hear about that from employers all the time, and whether it's wage growth or, or trying to eat some of the price increases, uh, that is a challenge they're facing, as well as for consumers who continually are paying more at the grocery store and the gas pump. So all that said, I'd say what you will see today in just 30 minutes is a budget for the governor that is really bold on where we go from here in our state's economy, from workforce development to economic development to how we take care of our workers and encourage businesses to come and grow in our state. We've got just a great uh, package, we believe, of really bold initiatives that uh, are well-timed for the beginning of this new year as we look at the legislature and what we can do together to grow the Minnesota economy for everyone. So excited for a lot of economic news today. Grateful for you all for joining us. I'll turn to my colleague, Orianne Casal, to go into some of the details, and then we'll take your questions. Thanks, Commissioner. So as the commissioner said, uh, Minnesota lost uh, 5,200 jobs in December with all the losses in government, actually in local government. Um, and it was local, specifically uh, looks like it was local government, um, not education. Um, and so local government basically lost 6,100 jobs with the private sector adding 900 jobs over the month. Um, the unemployment rate ticked up two tenths of a point to 2.5% in December with the um, addition of 6,287 6, unemployed people. Minnesota's labor force grew slightly. It grew up, uh, it grew uh, by 3,400 people. Um, the labor force participation rate remained the same as November uh, at 67.9%. And over the year, so uh, since December 2021, we have added uh, 45,572 people to the labor force. Um, so that's up 1.5% compared to 1.5% um, in Minnesota compared to 1.6% nationally. Uh, next slide. The unemployment rate dropped for black workers to 3.9% and ticked down for Hispanic workers to 3.8% on a 12 month moving average basis in December. The unemployment rate ticked up for white workers to 2.3% um, and all were below their level of February 2020 just prior to the recession. Uh, next slide. The labor force participation rate for both Black and Hispanic Minnesotans rose in December. 70.7% uh, of Black Minnesotans aged 16 and over, and 75.3% of Hispanic Minnesotans are in the labor force. Both rates are slightly below where they were prior to the pandemic, but higher than that of white Minnesotans. Um, so for white Minnesotans, their labor force participation ticked down to 67.8% in December. And those are largely based on the um, age demographics of those, of those groups. Uh, next slide. So this slide goes back to 2002 to provide a longer term look at labor force participation and unemployment rates for um, men and women in Minnesota. It shows that both men and women have seen a decrease in their labor force participation rates largely as a result of the aging population. Women were hit harder during the pandemic, those, those bumps there in uh, uh, December 2020 and 2021. Um, in terms of their labor force participation decline and their unemployment rate increase. In 2022, women's unemployment rate uh, declined faster than men. So those are the last uh, 12 points on the graph. Um, so women's unemployment rate uh, dropped 1.9 percentage points over the year in December compared to just six tenths of a point for men. But labor force participation has risen faster for men, up eight tenths of a point compared to three tenths of a point for women over the year. 
Okay, next slide. So as the commissioner said, over the year, Minnesota added 91,936 payroll jobs, up 3.2%, with the private sector um, adding 87,587 jobs, or 3.6% over the year. Private, um, the private sector is slightly up from last month in terms of over the year growth. Um, but the total, so total payroll, including government, is down because of the losses in government. Nine of 11 super sectors posted positive over the year employment growth, with the exceptions being mining and logging and construction. Um, I think that is, <laughs> that is, uh, let's see. I think I did not maybe update that graph. Okay, well let's let's keep going through, and I will uh, I will look this up as we're going. So leisure and hospitality um, grew the fastest. Leisure and hospitality uh, grew 10% over the year, adding 23,000 jobs. Um, education and health services added 25,000, uh, 25, almost 700 jobs, up 4.7%. Um, and that was uh, primarily, uh, most of the job additions were in the healthcare and social assistance sector, um, but that was up 4.4% over the year. That was 20,600 jobs. Um, the education services sector was up 7.2%, so a higher proportional growth with the addition of 5,000 jobs. Um, and then just to focus on nursing and residential care facilities for a moment, um, nursing and residential care facilities, which had been losing uh, jobs for over the year for many months, um, has added jobs now for the fourth straight month with a growth rate of 3.1%. Manufacturing posted the addition of 12,500 jobs um, over the year, up 3.9%. Um, and um, it was construction and other services that um, posted over the year job losses. So construction lost 3,500 jobs, down 2.8% over the year. And other services was down um, almost 1,000 jobs or just 0.8%. So I think that that graph did maybe did not get updated. I, or no, that graph got updated, but my notes were wrong. Okay, we're good. Um, so, so, so that's the story on over the year growth. We can move to the next slide. Um, so this is the slide that we show uh, every month showing the, the loss of 400, 417,600 jobs between February and April 2020, so the, the pandemic recession, um, and how many jobs have been gained back since, um, since that period. So since then, we've regained 377,600 jobs as of December, or 90% of all of those jobs that were lost during the pandemic recession on a seasonally adjusted basis. The private sector has regained 369,000 jobs or 95% of the jobs lost during that period. Um, overall, this means we're still 1.3% or 40,000 payroll jobs short of where we were prior to the pandemic, um, while, the min while the U.S. surpassed that mark in June. By industry, seven sectors have surpassed their February 2020 level of jobs. Arts, entertainment, and recreation, you can see, um, uh, you can see for the first time that um, arts, entertainment, and recreation has been adding jobs very fast and is has now surpassed where uh, we were in uh, February 2020. Educational services is slightly above. Um, healthcare and social assistance is also now slightly above. Manufacturing, trade, warehousing, and utilities. 
Um, management of companies, which had been losing jobs earlier in the year, but has since um, been gaining jobs. And professional, scientific, and technical services all have surpassed their level of February 2020. Construction and admin and support services, including temp help, has surpassed um, its February 2020, had surpassed its February 2020 level earlier in the fall, but then has since slid back a little bit. Um, and state and federal governments have continued to lose jobs over the period since, um, since prior to the pandemic. Of those industry sectors most impacted by the pandemic recession, other services has regained 78% of the jobs it lost and accommodations and food services regained uh, nine, uh, 89% of the jobs that it lost during the pandemic. And next slide. So in terms of wages, the private sector uh, wage growth slowed in Minnesota to 3.7% over the year in December, well below inflation, which was at 6.5%, and below the US, uh, US wage growth of 4.6%. And these, you know, just to put this in perspective, we're now comparing um, over the year wage growth to very strong over the year wage growth in 2021. So we're, you know, that's when we really started seeing that very high wage growth happening. Um, this graph stacks the 2021 and 2022 over the year December wage growth. Um, and despite the slower wage growth overall, sectors are seeing wage growth that's beating that's still beating inflation in Minnesota. So construction and retail trade um, wage growth beat inflation in 2022. Uh, wage growth in professional and business services and in nursing and residential care facilities beat inflation in both 2021 and 2022. Uh, leisure and hospitality, and specifically food service and drinking places, saw inflation beating wage growth until mid-2022, but wage growth has since slowed again in comparison to that very strong wage growth in 2021. And then just the final slide um, shows the trend in, wage, in wages in Minnesota and the U.S., with um, private sector wages in Minnesota. So that's the, just if you could go to the next slide. Um, private sector wages in Minnesota at $35.57 and um, 50, um, seven cents an hour um, uh, in December, and then nationally at $32.73 an hour. And I think we're gonna open it up for questions now. Great, thanks, Orion. Let's turn to our friends. And if you use a little hand raising feature in Teams, that would be great. Vito, let's go to you. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy um, New Year. Uh, I had a question about the increase in the unemployment rate. Um, I think maybe in the last month or two, like there was some. Most of that un the increase in the number of unemployed came from people entering the labor force um, and not necessarily from people who went from employed to unemployed. So I'm just kind of curious. I may be wrong about that, but I was just kind of curious if you can talk about like the uptick to 2.5 percent. Like who are, are those mostly people going from employed to unemployed or who are entering the labor force who were on the sidelines before? Or is it a mix? Um, and uh, any thoughts about like where we're at still at 2.5%? It's so low, obviously, but it has been ticking up um, every month for several months now. Orion, why don't you take the data question and then we can maybe both speak a little bit to the, the broader question of what, what 2.5 means in today's economy, because I think it's a good one. But we'll start with, with you, Orion. Sure, we have um, an additional 6,300 uh, 6, unemployed people. Um, and we uh, lost um, almost 3,000 employed people. So, at, so the labor force did grow. It looks like um, people have come, part of that um, increase in the number of unemployed is people coming into the labor force. Um, so, so that's, you know, that's probably, that's the good news. The labor force did grow some, you know, somewhat in December. Um, but again, the unemployment rate is still really very, very low. We're still at a very low number of unemployed people in Minnesota. Um, you know, 
one of the lowest numbers we've really ever seen. So, um, yeah, and I, I would just add to that. I mean, it is it has ticked up for the last few months and it was one point eight, as you'll remember, kind of in late summer. Um, that was always just kind of a shockingly low number. Two point five percent still remains a shockingly low number in a lot of ways. You know, if we could trade a few ticks on the unemployment rate, but gain workers, which is what we did this month, that would probably be broad, broadly better for our economy. We were very excited to see an additional 3,300 workers join the workforce um, and a labor force participation rate holds steady. That just remains the number one barrier we're facing right now in our economy. So, um, but it is just, a, it's gonna be a kind of a frothy few months and maybe a, a, a sort of challenging year as it relates to some of these data points, because there's gonna be some jumpiness, I think, again, just given, where we're headed more broadly um, in the country. Uh, Ethan, let's go to you. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'm just curious about that um, local government piece. Um, is that, I mean, do we have any more to say about that? Is that a trend that we see every year around this this time, or do we know what's going on there? Well, I mean, you may have some thoughts on this, but I, our first thought was, well, gosh, we would have thought local government hiring would have increased with all the snow we got in December because snowplow, <laughs> snowplow drivers would be getting hired hand over fist just to, to Keep the streets clean. So we, we were also a little bit surprised. I asked the same team of, of same question of our team, you know, where did this come from? Again, we think part of it might be a seasonal adjustment issue, part of it might be sort of end of year grant shifting. We don't typically see 6,100 local government workers leave the workforce in December. Um, but the data doesn't show us exactly what's going on here, is, is kind of the big picture answer. And or I'll, I'll turn it to you if you want to extrapolate any further. But uh, we haven't seen or, or tracked any signals of local government that, uh, uh, that would have given us reason to believe this would happen. So we're we're similarly scratching our heads a little bit with this one, Ethan. I don't know, Oriana, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, we did add 4,000 jobs in November in local government, and then we lost 6,100 in December. So it's been quite jumpy, um, and some of that could be the seasonal adjustment um, not doing a very good job because of the previous two years where there was really a lot of jumpiness. Um, right. So we'll we'll continue to track this and see what it looks like in January. I think um, that's probably the best answer that I can give. Thanks. Hey, let's go to you. Hey, uh, a couple things here. Um, first one, Commissioner, uh, we've asked you for months and you talk about this, that you have not, uh, you do not hear from the uh, executives that you talk to uh, talking about mass layoffs. Are they talking to you about hiring freezes and maybe putting a pause on, on some of their hiring ambitions? You know, it's mixed. I hear that in, in, in pockets. And we have see, we did see some layoffs kind of near the end of November, early December. I was looking at that data again this morning. You saw Packer Sanitation in Worthington lay off 121 people kind of early December time frame. Uh, Rexam Beverage in St. Paul laid off, I want to say close to 100 kind of in early December. And, and Turk over in Plymouth Manufacturing Company laid off kind of uh, several dozen workers. So we, we have seen some layoffs. Um, but I think that it's a bit of a mixed bag because that supply chain navigation of, of getting the parts that you need to actually create the, the products that are uh, pent up in demand, at least in the manufacturing sector, um, is getting better. And because it's getting better, I think employers are reticent to, to give up on, on workers that they have and, and freeze hiring when there's still demand. Um, but I think that people are are taking a look at what this year looks like and, and having different expectations. We released a survey last week, our kind of annual survey with the Fed on expectations that uh, manufacturers have for the year. And I think our expectation is that it's going to be a challenging one and that um, hiring may slow a bit. So, you know, we're, we're tracking it. Um, I think we're not seeing the kind of uh, layoffs or or hiring pause you'd expect in an economy that was thrown into recession even with some of the gdp numbers that we've seen over the past uh, you know four or five quarters so it remains kind of a unique window in american economic history and i would just say for minnesota i mean we remain a strongly diverse economy we're grateful for that we've weathered these things better than most um, because we have a lot of different sectors of strength and because of our labor shortage we just have this this pent-up demand and concern of losing labor that is really just the, the the loud chorus that I hear from employers every day, and so it might be different in a state where there's you know relative parity between the number of jobs that are there and those who are looking for them. But you have three to one or four to one, you know the demand really does seem to to continue to 
um, to drive hiring. And we're hearing in our workforce centers every day that, that employers need workers. So it is a unique, unique window, Theo. It's, it's a good well, question. That's, that was the second thing I was going to ask is, given that the labor force ticked up this month after I think five straight months where it was going down, is there a consensus yet that I mean, we talk about, you know, the aging workforce and all this presenting these structural challenges. Is there a consensus as to where the labor force goes from here? Well, I'll tell you where we where we think it, it needs to go. There's there's a couple of factors that we're heavily focusing on. You hear the governor talk about this a little bit later today when we talk about our budget. One is that we do need to get more people to come to the state. And we have been far too uh far too quiet as a state in terms of marketing for talent. That is something that we need to heavily focus on. We've got to change that demographic calculation and be proud and bold about the things that are great about living here. We know if we get people here, they end up staying, but it is hard to get them here. And the weather is a major factor. There are still a lot of workers hiding in plain sight, and there's a lot of workers that are underemployed. There are workers that are working 15, 20 hours a week at Amazon. They could be working more, but that's where their hours have sat. And I don't mean to call it Amazon. This is, has happened to a lot of different companies. Um, but so there's some, some, some areas for growth where we think um, there's some underemployment, and so reskilling is really important. We also think that focusing on the industries where we see the biggest growth is really important. And one of the areas you'll hear from us in the coming uh, days and weeks is this effort around kind of a drive for five, focusing on the five industries that we see looking at all the data, both have the biggest headroom for, uh, for growth, uh, have the highest paying jobs available given that calculation, and are a place where, where government can play a more forward leaning role. You know, we're talking about technology, the caring professions, manufacturing, education, the trades. Those five industries we feel like are worth focusing on more, more uh, heavily from the government perspective because it's, there's things we can do there and training that's needed. So um, a long answer to your question, but I think uh, it's a combination of the, those things and automation. I mean, I'm sure you've all been playing around with chat GTP, the, the whole wave we're seeing in AI shifting how companies are doing business. Efficiencies are going to come from AI and from automation. We've got some grant programs and some things in the market that are help incentivizing smaller employers and, and smaller manufacturers to, to purchase that equipment more quickly. We've got some loan programs we launched last fall. We have some training programs that have been around for a while. We are very bullish in automation as a trend for our state. You have to be when you face the realities that we have in Minnesota. So I think between getting more people here, up leveling and, and finding jobs for those who are here and automating as quick as we can, and then focusing on those five industries that I talked about a moment ago, that starts to look like, I think, a more laser-like focus on what we can do as a state government at a really unique juncture. So um, a lot of good work today ahead, and we hope some, some new dollars and new energy from the legislature to get it done. Okay, thank you. Maybe we have time for, for one more question, if anybody, uh, anybody has one. Well, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, we enjoy these monthly opportunities.